It's okay. One okay, so the first one we have is ClusterNet. Um, this is a resubmission. And uh, the last time we we had given them a message saying we want oh, to see Dims more. for the recording. Um, yeah. This is our sandbox meeting from February 28th. Carry on. Cool. Hi, everyone. Today is February 28th. <laughs> this is a sandbox meeting. Uh, and we are going to start with our uh, board. Uh, so the upcoming meeting today, we are going to talk about at least four of them. The first one is ClusterNet. And for ClusterNet, uh, it's a resubmission. And last time we told folks that uh, we needed to see more activity. Um, let's go check that. Uh, but just to remind everybody um, what we are talking about here, maybe we should go through it quickly. Um, the repo URL. Um, that's the GitHub org. So managing your Kubernetes clusters as easily as visiting the internet, okay. Okay, it supports multiple clouds, edge and stuff. Um, helps you manage million, thousands or millions of Kubernetes clusters as easily, okay. Okay, so it is a multi-cluster management. It has a scheduling framework too, and a CLI. Okay, so this is the traditional architecture we have for multi-tenancy. There's a parent cluster and there are several child clusters. Uh, has anybody been able to try this out? Um, so, so things I'm talking about, taking a look at this, I have to went through this. Yeah, oh, I have gone through this before. Um, yeah, I, th I, th I think it's, it's a good project. Uh, it has, uh, you know, um, it provide very good features and uh, um, the information about the design is, is you know, um, is good enough, has enough information. Um, as far as I know, the... Um, it's also last time's comment was, uh, I think you say it's a contribution, not much contribution. Is that the comment? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's what we told them last time. Um, oh. looks like yeah, it looks like. Uh, as well, I think it's worked with some well, you know, has well, well documented and also has quite some activity. Okay. Um, I looked at the number of contributors that were or at least that who made comments after the last TOC meeting. I think that was April 22. Um, it looks like there are new contributors that have been added, but the original author, uh, I think the issue, uh, they definitely have the most number of comments. So that's like 400 comments, and then others are like 20, 30, and so on. Uh, but it still shows some progress. So I think that is a good sign for sure. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks to me kind of fine for the sandbox. It's got, you know, I mean, it's not a huge number of people, but it's not, you know, there seem to be a number of a number of people contributing. Yeah, it looks like they're on the right track. I think that they've been doing better. I don't think that they're ideal. Like when we ask for more participation, I don't think that we they've hit the expectation that we had set at that time, but I think they're close enough. Um, if we accept them, I would just add a caveat that their cluster net con contributing guide lacks the guidelines that they said that they would put in it. Mm -hmm. Um, it actually says the following is a set of guidelines for contributing to ClusterNet. They're just guidelines, not rules. Use your best judgment and feel free to propose changes to this document and a pull request. And then it just has a link to the code of conduct. Okay. Do you want to add that there? And then we'll start the vote. Yep. I can do that now. Thank you. Ah, so voting. Voting is going to be a little different this time. So um, what is going to happen is I'm going to come in here at the top of the hour 
um, that's 9 a.m. Pacific and kick off a vote. From here, you get to come in and basically use GitHub and it will tell you everything in the particular issue about how to be able to vote. And the reason that I'm doing it at 9 a.m. Pacific is because we have a week to vote and yeah. the vote will automatically close at 9 a.m. Pacific on March 7th. So, good fun. Okay. Sounds good. So yeah, just let's leave the like, comment. Keep your votes in your head, all of that. Um, but we're not going to do a direct vote like in this particular meeting. You got oh. a little bit to think about it. Sounds good. So I mean, you're going to send out the vote link, right? Yes. Oh. Yes. Uh, it'll it'll there'll be a vote that will be opened over in GitHub. I will collate all of them and send them to you, so you know what's open. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. I'm closing this one. Um, then the next one is Inspector Gadget. Um, this is from our friends at Microsoft. Um, packaging deployment and execution of eBPF programs, including many based on BCC tools. Um, didn't we do one for solo IO as well? Um, but then you're talking about Bumblebee. Yeah. Bumblebee. Yep. Um, at the time we made the decision that because they were only packaging, uh, EBPF programs into containers, that wasn't anything special for cloud native. Yeah. Okay. So here, uh, that is addressed, right? Like there is debugging, troubleshooting, inspecting various aspects. And then there is a uh, container cryo. Have you seen this, Justin? Work with container cryo? Um, I haven't seen any with Kubernetes, but I presume it's there. Um, so we do have one question here that raised up. Um, do you remember this one, Nikita? Yeah, I think we just have blocked on the license review requesting. Yep. From this the is with legal, um, the, the legal committee over on our end. Okay. So no need to take that into account. Okay. Um, so going and looking at their website. This one I have played with, and it's definitely more than just packaging up the PF programs. They're, okay. they're, conti they're continuing to innovate with this tooling, and it's actually pretty good. You like it? Yeah. Good. Um, did you use it uh, for container stuff or Kubernetes or both? Kubernetes. OK. Yeah, I, I think it provides very useful uh, information debugging, right? The communities, right. I think it's a very important um, topic. I think this one contributes to that. Um, let's go look how many people are there. Um, I also know that they have a work, the flake held workshops and whatnot uh, that integrate with like kubectl plugins, like kubectl trace. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, so that plugin allows you to schedule uh, tra PPF trace programs in your cluster. So they have integrations with other tools out there too. Okay, so like D1 sets that go around putting th things in? Yeah. Um, so Specifically, it kind of sits in the middle of like, so it, you have the ability to target, lead, to, uh, target a specific workload, as opposed to like a lot of things, a lot of the other tooling that's out there that will just target everything. And then you're just right. dealt with a whole lot of data. This is more like point, this is more like a point solution. You're looking at a, you're trying to understand what's happening with a specific pod or a specific process. And, the, and this tooling lets you really focus on that problem. So uh, it feels like they are they are talking to the API server too then? You mm -hmm. get that? Okay. Yeah, there is enough number of issues, enough number of pull requests. Um, I definitely see this project growing in adoption, but I think most of the contributors seem to be from Kinfo slash Microsoft. Um, right. So maybe in the sandbox, we'll help them get contributors from different companies. Uh, they seem to have like kicked off in July for a significant amount. 
And in since then, it's been what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people. Um, uh, Madain, Turin, Berlin. Uh, at least there is geographical Berlin, to Berlin. Okay. Um, anything else you want me to look at, folks? Look at their blog, perhaps. Uh, I'm satisfied here um, to put to put this to an old vote. Yeah, I, I think uh, um, we can add that you know they if they can extend their contributor to more diversity like from other companies that would be good. Yeah, uh, you know that is on the mandate for sandbox itself. So, but you know, never hurts to remind people. And that's what they are here for. So uh, plus one. For, for what it's worth, uh, they also mentioned it in the issue body itself that they would like to apply for Sandbox so that they can grow their contributors. OK, four contributors. They are calling it out um, as well. Never mind. Okay, so uh, can I go to the next one? Uh, any other things you want to look here? Once, going twice. Okay, let's go to the next one. The next one is Clue Cuttle. Um, Clue Cuttle. Um, oh. I, I did have a chat with one person here. Um, yeah, so contributing 99% of the code. Um, Koda Black responded to that. And then Emily, you responded them to go talk to the tag. I don't see a notation whether they've actually gone and talked to the tag yet. I haven't either. Yeah. And it's similar to Helm file. Um, so I was looking at this. I haven't tried it out. Uh, but I was looking at the project and like it seems to do two things. So one is sort of custom uh, combine, customize, and helm in a way. So for example, it can add templating on top of customization manifests and so on. So in my opinion, I think if you want to use helm and customize together today, that is already supported in projects like Flux already. So you can already add substitutions for customize or patches for helm shots today. Uh, and like it's called out there, Helm file is also another existing tool that you can use to manage Helm charts in one go. Uh, the second thing that it does uh, or claims to do is like multi environment support. So you can deploy to different environments like dev, prod, and so on. But this can also be done today using customized overlays and it's already supported in Flux and Argo CD. Uh, but I think the main technical merit that this tool has is that it's simple enough. So it can do configuration management like without any uh, extra cluster side dependencies. So no controllers, no CRDs and so on. Uh, but I am personally not convinced that this is enough to warrant being in the sandbox. Uh, and I think one thing that could be a very big blocker is that it seems to be a one person project. Uh, I think the authors also called it out in the issue. So, I don't really see this as a good fit for Sandbox as of now. Right. I would agree. I'd like to see them go have a discussion with app delivery um, to get more feedback from them as well as potentially expose them to more contributors. Yeah. I think I agree with what the two of you said. Yeah, and, and I think the more contributor feedback was what we had given to the first project we'd looked at say was a cluster net. Yep. And I think it's that same guidance they went out to go tackle that needs to be tackled here. Okay, sounds good, Matt. 
Um, so Matt, can you cut and paste that or um, in right in your own words here? And we can move. Sure, on. I can come back to this issue and um, make a comment on it. Uh, do we want to vote or do we want to just say um, that explicitly? Like, I don't want them to feel that they're hitting a minus one, a bunch of minus ones. Uh, Amy, what do you think? I don't know. I think that seems accurate. I think this is one of the ones where we, we get to be able to say no vote at this time, reapply yeah. later. Okay. Um, yeah. I'll, Matt, I'll work with you on how to be able to like frame that in the, uh, uh, the issue here. We would end up applying the tag assigned label and put them in postponed. So the issue would remain open. That works. We could do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I so. can provide that as a comment so we don't lose track of this discussion. Okay. Yeah. I I will totally take that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else uh, wanted to chime in here? Yeah, I see this one person, you know, contributor is an issue. Yeah. But, you know, it's the other one, right? So every party, I think we would like them to have more contributors, right? Or more diversity. But this one is, is uh, just one. Person. Okay, um, let's go to the next one then. Uh, the next one is Loxy LB. Um, this is one of our projects that comes from the East Asia region. And most of the people I saw were um, from there. Uh, again, eBPF is hot, so they're going with that. And it's a load balancer. And it looks like they, they are in the edge space a lot. Yeah, it's a load balancer that connect or balance traffic to the edge sites, the edge clusters. To the edge clusters, not from, uh, or maybe both, I guess. It's a service, you know, load balancer to the edge yeah. clusters. So it is a Kubernetes. Okay, so it is bound to Kubernetes scenarios for each on-prem cloud provider. So uh, I guess that that's a good thing. Okay, uh, going to their repository, South Korea, um, Kubectl, EBPF. Uh, did anyone get a chance to look at this in depth? Um, so I did find one, when I last looked, there was one uh, repo in the GitHub org which was missing, so I asked them to add it. Full compliance for load balancer spec. At the time to like look at this deeply, but from a quick glance, a uh, couple of things stood out was uh, there were some GitHub discussions uh, that were like the maintainers were really proactive in answering feedback. And I saw a blog post from someone who was trying, who used this project and they had some feedback on bug reports and feature requests and the maintainers actually responded to them and also implemented those feature requests. So that was nice to see. Uh, one other thing that stood out to me was uh, they, it doesn't really have to be a blocker, but like they have a custom fork of the IP route two package because they, need some patches to properly load and unload eBPF modules. I am personally not a huge fan of having a fork, so I think it would be good to see them either upstream these patches or work with the community to find a solution. Uh, and again, most of the contributors seem to be from a single company that created this project. Uh, but again, I think Maybe being in the sandbox helps with community structure. Okay, so that's the netlocks.io. So locks is common here, locks LB and netlocks. Okay. 
of CLB are contributors. Oof, this looks bad. Two people and that looks like a bot account that they use. I've actually seen like human responses come from that account. So I've been very confused if that's a bot account or not. <laughs> okay. Yeah, maybe it's both. Creates an issue as well as PR. Oh, what? Um, if it's a bot that's helping the project, I think that's fine. But right. given that there is what appears to be some human level of interaction coming from it, I'd prefer that it have a better identity associated with it if it is a right. human. Sorry. Uh, they have only four tags, four releases, um, 26 um, four. So, Yeah, I mean, it's still relatively new. Yeah. Although it may have been an older code base or something, because there seems to be quite a lot of code. Ooh. The first external was 080 which has all the things. And then after that, it's been like, uh, not too many changes. Yeah. It's like four, the three other um, tags in between them have five PRs. Can we ask them to present a tab network? or to also increase the contributor base and to get yeah let's um, use the same thing that we used for uh clue cuttle go to the tag and do it as pending and come back when you have a few more external folks not just from the net locks seems acceptable to everyone Once. Who's going to comment on the issue to let them know? Um, Nikita? Yeah, I can do it. Okay. Uh, Nikita and Amy, right? Uh, like the last I'm one. Happy to work with, be able to make sure that all of the pieces come together. Okay. So, all right. Um, looks like we will be opening two votes, both ClusterNet and Inspector Gadget, correct? Yep. yep. Perfect. All right. Anything okay. else for this session of Sandbox Review? Uh, I think we are out of time for this session because we have to use the other half okay. for some other discussions that we need to have. So, uh, Amy, please go ahead and yeah, thank you. Thank you all very much.